Good morning, everybody. So today uh, we are the start of June 2021, and we're gonna take you guys on a little garden tour, uh, showing you kind of what we have started this year. I started doing some intercropping. Um, I've got some cabbage and some Brussels sprouts going to seed, but uh, I, I have a new garden that I put in this year with compost that I, I made myself we'll be showing you. So we'll uh, get right into it and show you what we got going on. All right, so to start, this is our garden that we built last year. Uh, if you remember any of it or if you want, we can leave a link up above and down below for you guys to check out how we built it. Um, so to start off, we've got uh, pine berries growing in these two urns in the front. Uh, they're just starting to put on some fruit. And then as we go in the gate to the right, we have some celery and chicory and then next to it we have uh, some carrots. I put two different kinds of carrots in here. I went with the germination method of uh, keeping the soil wet. So I, I got the soil wet first, then I created my rows, then I planted my seed lightly covered the seed. Uh, the depth should be no more than an eighth to a quarter of an inch. And then I took some white polyfilm and laid polyfilm across it and staked it down. And about a week later, um, all of these had started to shoot up. Um, so right now it's been about three weeks since they started shooting up. And then in the back, we have our peas starting to climb. So this was a first succession of green arrow. Then as we move down, we've got last year's sage that's gone to flower. And we'll get seeds from that this year. Then in the front here, I have a pepper uh, a banana savanna pepper and then we have a line of lemon basil another banana pepper these are two jalapeno plants and then in the back is our second succession of green arrow peas this corner is all of our carrots from last year so we had I didn't have great success with germinating carrots last year and the ones that did come up they came up late in the year so I couldn't really harvest them so this year they came back and we are gonna get seeds from these ones as soon as they start to flower but in the back corner here we have some cauliflower another cauliflower here and then in the very back, these two here, those are cucumelons. And then we get into our tomatoes, intercropped with two different kinds of radishes. This is our Brussels sprout plant that had overwintered and is now going to seed. If you have never had any of your cabbage go to seed or had it last a second year, each one of these flowers will produce a seed pod. So this, from my fingers up, is your seed pod. So that will be filled with uh, several different seeds. So each one of these little branches, or every flower that you see, will turn into a seed pod and that goes for all brassicas I believe and then moving over still more of our tomatoes which I believe are basically all 
uh, indeterminate, or no, sorry, they are determinant uh, bush tomatoes, uh, better bush tomatoes. And then one orange heirloom tomato uh, in the back, which I believe is gonna be indeterminate and I can run along my fence either way. Um, I did intercrop it with beets, but the beets have yet to pop up. We do have a bunch of volunteer stuff as the compost that I used was compost from last year. It was a mixture of leaf mold or leaf mulch and the vegetable waste that we had composted uh, throughout last season. Uh, we have our red cabbage, again going to seed, it wintered over. Two more cauliflower. This is all intercropped with a uh, second succession of carrots. Then moving down we have some lettuce, our leaf lettuce. Oh, and back over here, this is our second succession of leaf lettuce. And then I have our second succession of peas growing for the sugar snap peas. We have some parsley. And then this area here is our Denmark spinach with our first succession of uh, sugar snap peas. This is our head lettuce. So I've got a couple of head lettuce and sage that wintered over last year again and then around the outside around the outside we have some sunflowers that are going to pop up along here just to give a little bit of decoration and then along this side you can kind of see them popping up one there 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 so all the way along the edge along this side and the back is uh, popcorn. So we're going to try growing some popcorn for ourselves this year. And then we have yarrow in front of our little birdhouse. And then looking back up, that's our new garden. And then again, like I said, along the back side is uh, some more popping corn. So like right here, that's popcorn. Um, there is some weeds going in here I gotta get out um, and then there are I did sprinkle last year some like wild bee mix so some of that might be popping up too and then along this side again needs weeded and I also have some chicory growing in here okay so let's take you over and show you the new garden so this year has been a bit of an experimental year for us. So our garden, which is right down here behind me, is blocked by the light from, or blocked by the trees here, the cedar tree. I've already taken some out from it, uh, some of the branches to try to allow more light through, but it still isn't quite enough light I don't think it's not getting full direct light it's a lot of dappled light um, but yeah we'll take you along and show you the three new rows that we created okay so these are the three beds that we created this year uh, we created it using leaf mulch or leaf mold that we got from the four large maple trees that are on our property so in the first row we got some red onions and some regular yellow onions. I've started my beans and then behind that are uh, a potato which I believe are just like a regular white potato. I can't remember the actual name of it. We've got some pine berries growing in this little uh, grow bag. Another one over here. This is some lemon balm. And then in the crow bags at the head here and at the foot back there is lingonberry and that is a goji berry 
moving over, we have an elderberry, followed by a bunch of pep different kinds of peppers, and some cucumbers in the middle, all intercropped, as well as two rows of dill that run in between uh, the rows. So two rows of dill will run straight along in between all of this. Um, this is our cherry tree, which has been getting attacked by caterpillars this year. Next year I'll be doing the trimming and pruning on it before it all goes, uh, starts putting on all of its foliage. From what I've done for research, the best time is to do it in the spring or the fall. Uh, moving on to our next row, we have our high bush cranberry tree. And then I have a whack ton of onions that I started from seed, which I was pretty impressed with myself because I've never been able to get onions to start from seed before. Also, we have our tomatoes. So we have maybe three, four different kinds of tomatoes so far planted in. And then underneath this plastic, this is what I was saying about germinating my carrots. So I had a piece of plastic just set down onto it to make sure that it did not dry out because carrot seeds need to stay moist until they are, um, until they've emerged from their seed pod. And then at the end here again is just a different kind of um, elderberry tree. Okay, so this was the first that I've ever made uh, an in-ground uh, bed. I, this is going to be like a no-till style. I'm going to try and keep it as organic as I possibly can. Um, so right now, like I said, these beds are created from uh, the leaf mold or leaf mulch that we collected from these giant maple trees. We have four of them on our in-town lot and they drop a lot of leaves. Okay, so before I show you the other garden plot that we have, I just wanted to show you these other plants that we have in some grow bags. So this here is a white lilac tree. I was able to get to um, root from a cutting, which I'm pretty excited about because the lilac tree we have in our backyard is super pungent. It's a beautiful smell that you can smell at the start of the summer and it lasts for a couple of weeks at least, which we'll take it. And then up here, and then up here, which I'm also excited about because we've never had, is our gooseberry plant. So I know that you're supposed to thin out the inside and take away any of these branches that are crisscrossing, but I wanted to, being as this is our first year doing it, I wanted to see where the growth was going to go with it. So I've staked it out and kind of tied it up so that it has its own kind of set path for me. So we've already got a few fruit setting on it. I was able to get the aphids. It, it did have aphids on it, quite a few. All of these tender little tips we're just covered in aphids. Um, I was able to spray before the fruit was on the plant. I, I gave it a mist of uh, neem oil and Dawn dish detergent. And then each day I came out and gave it a spray with the garden hose to try to knock them off. And it seems to have worked as there are no more aphids and zero damage. So I was able to catch it early enough. All right, guys, I'm gonna take you over and show you our other little garden plot. All right, so this little garden plot, we haven't really done a whole lot to this year. Um, some of this stuff uh, we planted last fall and is popping up now. But first, this rose bush is doing awesome. I've never seen so many buds on it. There's just so many everywhere. Now I don't know if it has anything to do with the compost that we created ourselves because I did put some of that at the foot of it 
to try to give it a bit of extra food. Um, also, I've been fighting the caterpillars off of this, which have been relentless. As you can see, some of these buds, well, these ones are actually starting to open, but uh, a few days ago, some of the buds, like this one, have a nice chew hole in it. So that's what I've been dealing with, is trying to get them to stop eating my buds. And then down here, I've got two different raspberry bushes in uh, in grow bags we have thyme starting to grow underneath this uh, white plastic uh, this is broccoli three broccoli plants in this grow bag over here we have cauliflower and I believe Brussels sprout maybe kind of forgot to tag that one <laughs> uh, and then this is going to be a herb bag so we've got sage some calendula rosemary borage um, and then i have the marigold in the front over here this is last year's beets so in order to get seeds from beets you let them overwinter and they will put off these flowers which turn into seed eventually so I've got a bunch of these. I believe these are Chayuga beets. Probably wrong. Uh, this is our garlic, which I've never grown garlic before, and it is massive. These are probably two feet tall, pushing three feet. Uh, the stem is probably almost an inch round on most of them, three quarters to an inch round anyway. Back in here, I have a Gold Rush Zucchini and then a Black Beauty. Um, up in this area, I started or put some seeds in for some squash. So, so far the only one that's popped up is a uh, banana squash. Um, and then in the back are our on more onions. And then our raspberry plant, rhubarb, and this giant blueberry bush. And then more raspberries right here. So now we are going to show you some herbs on our deck and then show you what else we've got planted in grow bags in our backyard. Okay, so walking up to our house, on our deck we have our mint section <laughs> so we have a bunch of different kinds of mint uh, a lot of chocolate mint and then new this year we have some pineapple mint which is this variegated uh, plant back here um, Jen do you remember what this one is? The tags are there. Uh, ginger mint that's what it was so we have a ginger mint and a pineapple mint variegated pineapple mint. More chocolate mint. <laughs> oh, and there's a chocolate mint in there as well. Some more mint here. Spearmint. This is thyme and lemon balm. <laughs> what? What's in here? This is like a lemon. Like a lemon basil? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> got lemon basil. I'm not sure what's in this anymore. This is your wife's. <laughs> yeah, this is this is my wife's garden. So it's all in. So we have the lemon thyme, we have um, lemon balm, and we have sage in this one. Awesome. We've probably got uh, about half a dozen or so different kinds of mint. So this little urn is Got a brand new marjoram plant we put in there the other day. And then I'm trying to get some marjoram seeds to sprout underneath this white plastic. Which it looks like some of them are starting to sprout. There, that is spearmint. Um, and that is cat's pajamas, which is another type of mint. So spearmint, cat's pajamas. 
And then these are some Sweet Williams that we started from seed. Sweet Williams are uh, a plant that flowers in its second year. So its first year is basically setting the uh, roots and getting the foliage. And then the second year is flower. Um, also, can't let you forget our pineapple plant. So this pineapple we started from uh, a top of a pineapple we bought from the store, got it to root, and it survived the winter in our house. So it's back outside and can't wait to get a pineapple off of it either this year or next year because pineapples take two years to actually produce a fruit. Alright, so I guess that's everything for the herbs and what's on our deck. Let's take you out back and show you what we got going on there. Alright, so here's my messy section. So these are all plants that I still need to up pot. So a lot of peppers, tomatoes, I've got some oregano, some sage. Um, yeah, more or less just peppers and, and tomatoes and a bit of bit of herbs. And then swinging around. This is everything that I've been able to uh, up pot so far. So again, a lot of tomatoes, peppers. Um, I did a lot of sweet, uh, sweet peppers, like a tiny sweet pepper. And then uh, just a variety of different tomatoes. And then over here, our cucumbers, cucamelons, lemon apple cucumbers. And then back in the grow bags and stuff, uh, totes back here. Put more potatoes. We've got some purple Russian potatoes starting in here. Then we have some Norland potatoes in the second one. And then this last one, we were at a Amish uh, produce stand this year and picked up some uh, regular white potatoes from them in a 50 pound sack and some of them were shooting eyes so I put them in this dirt and they're doing more prolific than any of the other ones that I put in. And then these little grow bags are just duplicates of what's in these totes. This last one here however I had some peanut seeds so I was trying to do grow peanuts but I think that I had the soil too moist for too long and the peanuts actually instead of sprouting turned to mush and rotted. So we'll have to try that again. Alright guys, so that's what we got going on this year. Um, if you uh, have any questions or want to know what's uh, going on or what we did to get to where we're at, just leave a comment and, and let us know down below. And if you guys have any tips or recommendations for our garden, what we're planting, or how to plant it, drop that in the comments down below as well. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Alright, see ya.